Buck and Mag. And now time for the Environment Watch with Dennis Springer. Tonight, I want to concentrate on coral reefs and its importance to human survival, whether it is to feed mankind or to be used as a buffer for hurricanes, storms, surge and tsunamis. Coral reefs are not only very important in time of severe weather, but it also brings in a tremendous amount of capital in terms of tourism. However, there is a dichotomy in that the same tourists who come to see the corals are a problem to its survival. That is why it is essential that countries like ours with coral reefs must put all measures in place to protect the coral when tourists visit these sites. Nearly all coral reefs face sev severe decline in coral cover over the past several decades. In the Caribbean, for example, between 75 and 85, 85% of the coral cover has been lost in the past 35 years. Even the Great Barrier Reefs in Australia, the best protected reef ecosystem on the planet, has witnessed a 50% decline in the last 50 years. Climate change was definitely the exacerbating problem. It was also causing increased droughts, agricultural failure, and sea level rises at an increasingly faster rate, which implied huge problems for society. That means what is good for reefs is also critically important for people, and we should wake up to that fact. The future of coral reefs isn't a marine version of tree hugging, but a central problem for humanity. For example, more than 85% of reefs in Asia, Asia's coral triangle that is, are directly threatened by human activities, such as coastal development, pollution, and overfishing. The coral triangle covers Indonesia, Malaysia, Papua New Guinea, Philippines, the Solomon Islands, East Timor, and contains nearly 30% of the world's reefs and more than 3,000 species of fish. I therefore do not minimize the problem that the world governing bodies on marine life faces, but I'm concerned about how St. Lucia deals with the problems of coral reef pollution and the threat that it f faces, that we face in light of the record number of tourists coming to the Caribbean, more so this year. What is significant is to know what measures we have in place to mitigate coral reef depletion in terms of legislation, etc. There is no doubt that we can do so much and depend on international community to come forth with solutions that will benefit mankind on the whole. What I'm concerned about is global warming's impact on the ice caps in Greenland and the Antarctica. These are now melting, as I said before, at an alarming rate and threaten to increase sea levels by one or two meters over the century, enough to inundate our, city, our, our cities and villages. We must be all cognizant that the world was now in imminent peril and nothing would quench my resolve in spreading the message. It is the debt that I owe to my children and grandchildren, after all. In conclusion, I want to emphatically point out that the data that deals with global warming and climate change and the impacts it has, not only on developed countries, but the devastating effect it has on small island states like St. Lucia, is, is not coming from political mo motivated NGOs, but from the UN, UN international agencies, government funded research programs and academic experts. Year on year, the data gets stronger and stronger. Once again, I say, that the world has a last chance to get things right. If it fails, global disaster, melted sea caps, flooded cities, species extensions, extinction, sorry, and spreading deserts awaits mankind. Therefore, we have been warned.